Welcome everyone to this uh, webinar, uh, which focuses on uh, giving you guys uh, some information on uh, what's going on with the current Brexit situation and uh, what are the actions that must be taken to move on in the smoothest way possible and how in practice will your operation for obtaining a visa and being able to visit UK in the future, even for short staying, uh, will be affected. And to do so, we have the pleasure of uh, uh, having the contribution for from some uh, people that are very much involved into this uh, transition and they've dedicated their lives to the problem of uh, uh, laws related to immigration and procedures related to immigration. Uh, and uh, among these people, I'd like to introduce today's speakers that are uh, Chris Desira, that is a director and funding society at Serafus. That is a basically, it is basically a law firm that works uh, to provide uh, asylum, immigration, and uh, basic knowledge of EU and human rights laws and the services to both uh, individual and uh, communities and uh, companies. And then we have the chance of uh, also listening to a speech by Cristina Tegolo, the service coordination coordinator at Settle, that is another organization that helps you EU citizens to stay in the UK after Brexit. And uh, one of her collaborator and Daniela Vicini, that is a volunteer at uh, Settle and is a, a former, uh, is an alumni of the University of Pavia that made all of this possible, I would say, for what I've understood. And uh, together with me from the University of Pavia, there's also Michela Cobelli, who's currently uh, in charge of uh, uh, the part related to the EU mobility of students. And that has basically organized most of uh, the activities connected to this part of the mobility and has organized today's webinar. So now I give uh, uh, the, the scene to Michela Cobelli that will introduce the remaining part of the day. Thank, uh, you. thank, thank you so much, Matteo. Uh, my name is Michela Cobelli. I'm the head of the International Mobility Unit at the University of Pavia. Uh, just want to recap uh, briefly what is happening uh, within Brexit. I guess uh, all of you already know about it, but uh, just to, uh, to recap that the uh, UK will leave the uh, European Union uh, by the 31 of December 2020. So, so from the 1st of January 2021, uh, uh, it will become uh, uh, an overseas partner, let's say. Uh, we don't know about uh, uh, the final decision if UK will leave the uh, European Union with uh, an agreement, with deal, with no deal, with uh, what kind of deal. But uh, we decided anyway to organize this meeting because uh, uh, we, we already know what is happening for, uh, immigration rule, for the new immigration rule, rules of the European uh, citizens that uh, will, uh, will, will, will um, want to spend part of their life in UK after uh, 1st of January. So I pass the floor to Christina. Uh, it's your turn and uh, you will see, uh, you will know about something about Settled organization and also practic practical uh, rules for, for entering the UK after 1st of January. Thank you. Grazie Michela. 
And hi to everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here. It's, it's a pleasure to be representing Settle. Well done to Daniela, Daniela Vicini, our volunteer to organize this uh, very interesting, I hope, uh, uh, event uh, for you all. And we hope to share it uh, through a recording uh, to other university. Uh, Settled is a new charity. It was created soon after the Brexit referendum uh, with the help of the 3 million, an organization that supports the rights of EU citizens in the UK and uh, works in partnership with the British Europe, uh, which as uh, the 3 million do in the UK, British Europe support the rights of British uh, uh, people. British residents in the in the European countries. Settle's main goal is uh, working uh, to protect the rights of vulnerable EU citizens. Uh, and when we talk uh, about EU citizens, we really mean EU, EEA, and Swiss citizens living uh, in the UK. Uh, our mission is to reach out to those people who are risk to lose uh, their right to live in the UK after Brexit. As uh, uh, Chris, Chris Desira will explain later, um, if we do not apply to the EU settlement scheme before a deadline, we will be officially unlawfully residents in the UK and we will fall in the next of the hostile environment, uh, which is a, a, a policy that was created by the Home Office uh, to make life of uh, unlawful residents impossible, really hard. You basically become illegal. Uh, Chris will give you all the legal details. Uh, there are diff different reasons why people can be vulnerable. Uh, and they can have difficulties to apply to the new scheme. Uh, there could be difficulties because they don't have uh, the uh, valid ID, the valid document. Uh, they could have difficulties to access the scheme, which is a digital only scheme. So they need to have a smartphone, uh, they need to have uh, uh, they, they need to be familiar with IT and they need to understand the language as well because there are some details that they get, have to get familiar with and uh, uh, they need to provide some information, some proof of reference. So uh, there are really different kind of uh, uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, we consider vulnerable uh, senior citizens who have been here for a long time, for example, who are maybe married to British and got British children, but because they've been here so, for so long and they are so well uh, um, uh, mixed to the local community and to the way uh, they go alive here, yeah, they don't feel like they need to apply, they don't feel that this scheme is for them. Uh, so the fact that you've been here for a donkey's year for a long, long time and you meet married to a British, uh, it, doesn't make uh, an excuse for the home office. Uh, the fact that, for example, uh, uh, you are a, ch a child in care, uh, so you are um, under the social services, um, it doesn't protect you. you. The social services of someone, an adult, uh, has to do it for you. So there are people also who have applied under a European Union scheme and they got a permanent resident card. And this card will be not valid any longer after uh, the 31st of December 2020, as uh, Michela was saying, and uh, will be, the UK will be officially out uh, of the European Union. All those paperwork that were issued, all those documents that were issued, during uh, uh, under the European Union laws will not be lawful any longer. So there are people who think, so oh, I got this card, I'll be fine. No, you won't. Um, and um, so settle, what does it do? We have, uh, we help people through, um, since, since the COVID, we really, uh, uh, we help people remotely. We got a website that is translated in 14 languages, and one of these is the Italian language. 
and uh, we go we give support on facebook on whatsapp but we go an outline uh, multilingual outline we got italian one we got an italian forum on facebook that you can use search called italian forum and we respond to emails uh, in english and in all eu languages um, so we are very approachable i'm going to share uh, some information on the chat i'm going to give you our contact details. Settle has worked in collaboration with uh, the European delegation. We've been funded until the 31st of October to provide information uh, uh, and outreach from the Home Office. We are working with the EU 27 embassies, and we are also working with local authorities uh, and uh, with NGOs. Uh, uh, to our reach and support vulnerable people. And one of the collaboration that is quite long and uh, we are really proud to work with is with Serafus and with Chris Cecilia in particular. Um, and um, Serafus is the law firm that is working with the European uh, Commission first and with the European delegation in London now that um, the commission has been changed into a delegation to provide uh, support with the EU settlement scheme. So uh, I pass the ball to the expert here. And uh, Chris, this is with you. Thank you, Christina. Um, thanks for the introduction. And thank you, everyone, for inviting me here today. I'm just going to share my screen because I have a short presentation. Um, so hopefully, um, everyone will be able to see it, um, so just bear with me one second. So uh, hopefully everyone can see my screen now. Um, so just just yes. holler if you yes, can. Yes, Great, lovely. Um, so as as uh, Christina um, kindly introduced me, I'm a, I'm a solicitor working in a law firm called Serifus. Um, one of our clients is the European delegation to the UK. So we've been in, in advising the European Commission on Brexit and the EU settlement scheme and UK immigration law. And we've been doing that for about three years now. This presentation, um, which I've been asked to give today, uh, is going to give you a very broad overview of a, a UK residence scheme called the EU Settlement Scheme. Um, but I'll also talk about visitor visas briefly and also student visas briefly, because those might be relevant for people who intend to come to the UK for the first time after the end of this year. Um, so uh, the EU settlement scheme, the first scheme I'm going to talk about is, is about obtaining a residence permit for European citizens who are living in the UK um, and who have started to live in the UK before the end of this year. And the reason why the UK government needs this registration scheme to get residence permits for people is because EU free movement law the law that allows us to all move around the European Union and the UK uh, will cease to apply for the UK on the 1st of January next year. So it will no longer be enough for European citizens to be able to enter the UK with just their passport alone. They will now have to comply with visa requirements. But for those who are resident in the UK before the end of this year, they face a much easier UK immigration system because they can apply to the EU settlement scheme, which is an easy application process for people who can meet the requirements for it to obtain a UK residence permit, which will allow them to eventually stay in the UK permanently. But if you are not going to move to the UK before the end of this year, um, and you will be coming to the UK for the first time from the 1st of January, 2021, you'll be able to do so um, for studying in two ways. One of them is as, as a visitor to the UK, which will allow you to study for up to six months. But if you want to study in the UK for longer than six months, you will have to apply for a student visa before you travel to the UK. You will no longer be free, you no longer be able to be freely traveling to the UK for studies. 
you will have to apply for a visa first. So I'll talk about the EU settlement scheme first, because there'll be some of you who are moving to the UK or some of you who know people who live in the UK. So they need to be aware on how to apply to the EU settlement scheme to get that residence permit. So long as they were living here before the end of this year. If someone applies to this scheme, the EU settlement scheme, they will be applying for two statuses. One of them is called a settled status residence permit, which is a permanence residence permit. And people can get that permanent residence permit if they've been living in the UK continuously for five years or more. For people who have been living in the UK for less than five years, they're applying for a pre-settled status residence permit, which will be a five-year residence permit that will allow that person to live, continue living in the UK and to have the chance to apply for the settled status residence permit once they have lived in the UK for five years. I touched on the first deadline for the scheme, which is the end of this year, the 31st December 2020. For anyone that wants to apply under the scheme, they must have moved to the UK and started living in the UK before that date. And if they have moved to the UK and start living in the UK before that date, they can apply to the EU settlement scheme and they must make that application before the 30th of June 2021. This scheme also allows family members to be included. So if you're an EU citizen um, and you're married, your EU your uh, partner can also apply under the scheme. And for family members, your family members don't need to be European to get a residence document under this scheme, so long as the one of the family members that they're relying on is European. So you can include you. So the family members who can come and join you. Uh, any time in the future under the scheme are those that are listed here on this presentation slide, spouse or civil partner, durable partner. Durable partner just means you're not a spouse or a civil partner, but you're in a long term relationship and you can prove that long term relationship and and children and parents and grandparents and so on uh, it, of the spouse or the civil partner or the EU citizen. But that relationship must have existed before the end of this year. You must be a, a related to the EU citizen before the end of this year, with the exception of children who are born later. This also included. Anyone else outside of this list can't join you later on. They'll need to be in the UK with you before the end of this year. If you need to apply for this scheme, you're going to need to do a few things. One of them is to prove that you're eligible to apply for this scheme by proving who you are and your nationality. You need to then prove your length of residence in the UK so you can fit, so you can get granted the pre-settled status residence permit or the settled status residence permit. You'll have to undergo a criminality check um, and as an extra step for family members, if you're a family member applying, you need to prove you're a family member by providing a marriage certificate or birth certificate, for example. It's a fairly straightforward process. Most of it can be done online uh, so long as you've got the right documents. Uh, so. For students um, eligible under the EU settlement scheme, this application is free. Um, but as I said, it will only work if you're living in the UK before the end of this year. This scheme is a bit different to the way EU free movement law works. You don't need to hold comprehensive sickness health insurance coverage to be able to apply for a residence permit under this scheme. Uh, and this scheme doesn't really care about what you're doing in the UK when you're in the UK. It doesn't matter if you're a student, it doesn't matter if you're working, you just need to prove your eligibility by proving who you are and also prove that you're living in the UK. So you don't need health insurance to apply under the scheme. The first step to prove your identity or nationality, you can do that digitally if your passport or national ID card has a chip in, embedded in it and you can download the Home Office uh, ID document check app from the Google Play Store or the Apple Store. And that app will allow you to scan your passport and to take your photograph and to send that data to the Home Office. And it will, it will take you step by step through the process when you're using the app. It's very easy if your document has a chip inside it and it's compatible. The next step is to prove your length of residence in the UK because that decides whether you get the pre-settled status residence permit or the settled status residence permit. So to get this permanent settled status residence permit, you need to have been living in the UK continuously for five years. Um, this is an important requirement uh, because this does work like EU free movement law works. 
that if you're absent for too long from the UK, you won't be eligible for settled status and you might be locked out of the scheme and you, you'll need to apply for a different visa if you want to stay in the UK longer. So there's, uh, so the rough rule is, is that you must be in the UK for at least six months or more in every 12 month period that you're in the UK. And that must stretch over a five year period. You're allowed one absence of more than six months, but not exceeding 12 months, but it only can be for serious reasons. One serious reason includes studying. So if you move to the UK before the end of this year and part of your course requires you to study um, in Italy, for example, you'll be permitted to go back to Italy but for a period of not, ex not exceeding 12 months to study in Italy. And you must return back to the UK uh, to make sure your absence is less than 12 months so you'll be eligible to apply for settled status later. So I know as students, um, we never really had to think about, you know, the type, you know, our future plans and we can move wherever we want and uh, take each day as it comes. Under the EU settlement scheme, you can't do that anymore. If you want to live in the UK permanently, you're going to have to watch your time outside of the UK and you're going to have to plan your future a little bit more than you used to do in the past. Um, so as, as I've touched on before, and I'll keep touching on it because it's an important date, you need to be living in the UK before the end of this year um, to be able to be eligible under the EU settlement scheme. That means you, you can't only just move to the UK by the end of this year, you need to have evidence that you've actually moved to the UK. So it won't be enough to come to the UK before the end of this year um, and, uh, and then leave again for a few months. You need to establish a life in the UK. You need to have evidence that you're living here um, and the Home Office will expect to see that evidence in five years time when you apply for settled status. It's not enough to just simply say, I, I entered the UK before the 31st of December, 2020. So if you're coming, if you're planning to come to the UK, at some point before the end of this year, I recommend when you do apply straight to the EU settlement scheme and also try and establish paperwork to show you're living here. So, you know, have student residence uh, correspondence, set up a bank account, get some paperwork in place to show that you actually are living in the UK. If you want, when you come to the UK, you can ask the border control at, at the airport, if you're coming through the airport, to stamp your passport. Now, normally EU citizens can't get stamps and passports, but you can get one if you ask for one. So you can go to the manual border control, speak to a border agent and say, I would like a stamp in my passport to prove that I've entered the UK and they will give one to you. Um, if you're remote le learning, because some, some students are, you may have been accepted already on a course in the UK. Um, and you're studying remotely because the university doesn't want you to travel to the UK due to the pandemic. It's not enough to simply say that I'm remote learning on a UK course to be eligible under this scheme. This scheme is about presence in the UK. So if you're remote learning on a UK course already and you want to make sure you're covered under the EU settlement scheme, you have to physically move to the UK before the end of this year. Otherwise, you're going to have to when you, when you enter the UK later on, um, from 2021 onwards, um, you'll have to apply instead for a student visa. And a student visa is a much more complicated application process. It's not just about proving who you are and how long you've lived in the UK. You'll also be required to pay student visa fees. You'll be required to pay annual contributions into the NHS to cover health insurance. You're also going to need to prove you've got enough money to support yourself and you're gonna to have to make a much more complex visa application. So it's, it's and I'll, I'll talk about those requirements a bit later. So if you enter the UK before the end of this year, it's a much easier application to get a residence permit. If you enter the UK after the end of this year, um, you've got a more complex visa application to make, and you probably do need a lawyer to help you with that type of student visa application. Um, but if, you're, if you do move before the end of this year and you're applying for pre-settled or settled status, um, you might, you'll might you have to prove your presence in the UK. Uh, that can be done in a couple of ways. One of them is that the online application form tries to prove it for you if you've been in the UK long enough and you've got records at the government department that deals with work, um, or you, you've been in the UK for a while and you've dealt with the government department that deals with benefits and pensions. If you've dealt with those government departments before the online application form may be able to check your residence for you. 
if you haven't or you've just arrived you're going to have to scan and upload paperwork to show you're living in the uk so for example a letter from your college or university uh, uh, rental agreements for your student residents a bank statements you need to scan this type of paperwork and upload it to the application form to prove your length of residence in the uk the last stage uh, that you need to pass through is a criminality check hopefully um, this won't be an issue to everyone on this call but just for your information uh, this application process uh, will uh, be a much more complex process if you've got a serious criminal uh, history so, for example, you've got you have a criminal history that uh, shows that you've been convicted for an offence where you've been in prison for 12 months or more, or you've got a criminal history that shows you you've had a pattern of offending. If any of those two circumstances occur, your application will risk being refused. And so if, if you've got that kind of history, it's a good idea to get a lawyer to help you with this application because it will be a more complex process. So if, if you get through those steps in the application form and you send it to the Home Office, eventually the UK Home Office will email you back and say you've been granted a status. If you've been granted pre-settled status, that will mean you've got a limited uh, residence permit that will allow you to live in the UK for up to five years. You need to make sure you're continuously living in the UK. And before that five year residence permit expires, you make another application to the EU settlement scheme to apply for settled status, the permanent status. It doesn't automatically change from pre-settled to settled status, from the temporary to the permanent. You have to make a second application later on once you've lived in the UK long enough. If you've been granted uh, um, uh, the pre-settled status or the settled status, you'll get a digital uh, uh, status. It will, you won't get a residence permit or a stamp in a passport. Uh, you'll get a digital status where you'll be able to log into the, the UK government website and you'll be able to view your residence status and you'll be able to electronically share it to other people. Settled status works the same way in that digital way, um, but settled status is the permanent status document. Um, once you get that settled status, you're permitted to live in the UK permanently. You don't have to make any more applications to the Home Office. But once you've got that permanent resident status, um, you could lose it uh, if you leave the UK and you don't return to the UK uh, within five years. So if you leave the UK with settled status and you're outside of the UK for five years and one day your settled status expires. So if you get settled status and you want to keep that residence connection to the UK, make sure you travel to the UK for holidays or to visit friends or family for a short period to make sure that you're never absent for more than five years. If you get settled status, you'll be able to become British later on, but you're going to have to meet the eligibility requirements for British citizenship. Now, I've touched on a few or hinted at a few benefits of this scheme, um, uh, as opposed to student and visitor visas, which you'll have to apply for if you come to the UK for the first time after the end of this year. So for the EU settlement scheme, for those that come to the UK before the end of this year, it's a free application. You don't pay visa fees. You don't pay health insurance fees to the NHS. The criteria for getting a status is much easier. You could make this application yourself without paying a lawyer to help you for it, with it. If you're eligible under the scheme, you'll be able to have access to the student fees that are equivalent to what British people pay, which is much lower. So you'll have access to home student fees. Um, so you won't have to pay the higher international student fees if you've got a status under this scheme. Um, you don't need to uh, show you've um, uh, got any money to support yourself here while you're studying. And if you get the status under this scheme, you can work without any restrictions on who you can work with and how many hours you work. Um, you, there's more benefits to it. You don't have to study to keep your pre-settled or settled status. You, you, your status is not linked to you being a student. So you can quit your course, you can change your course. And the same thing with jobs, you can get any job you like. You can, you can work in any types of jobs. You can switch employers as many times as you like. And so you can stay here without having to be conscious about what your what activities you're doing while you're here. Um, and your family will be able to join you under this scheme without paying for visa fees themselves. Um, there's a, uh, I highlighted the deadline to the scheme earlier in this. Um, you need to make sure if you're going to apply under the scheme that you apply before the 30th of June 2021. 
because if you apply after this date, you might be permitted to apply late, but you'll have a period of unlawful residence in the UK, which means your university might tell you you can't continue your studies until you get a residence permit. Your employer might uh, tell you you can't carry on being in your job until you get your residence permit. But if you apply before the deadline, the 30th of June 2021, you'll be able to continue studying, continue your work without any interruptions. So it's important if you want to continue living in the UK and doing what you want in the UK to apply before that deadline. Now, if you're going to come to the UK after the end of this year, uh, you have two main options if you're going to come for studying. One of them is a visit visa. A visit visa uh, is a type of visa which you don't have to apply for in advance. You don't have to apply for this visa and get this visa before you travel to the UK. You could travel to the UK and when you arrive in the UK, the UK immigration process will automatically grant you a visitor status on arrival. Now, if, if you come in as a visitor and, and enter in the UK in this way, you have to uh, be aware that if you're coming to study, you'll only be allowed to study for courses for up to six months. And as a visitor, you'll only be able to stay in the UK for up to six months in every 12 month period. So there are limitations on what you can do while you're in the UK and how long you can stay in the UK as a visitor. You also need, you're also not allowed to come to the UK as a visitor in order to live here. You must demonstrate that you've got an intention to return back to your home country before your visit visa expires. So if you intend to stay in the UK for a longer period, or you want to study a course that's longer than six months, you can't use the visitor visa process and um, because the visitor visa process won't work for you. And if you study for a course longer than six months, for example, as a visitor, then you will breach your visitor visa permission to be in the UK and it will be a black mark on your UK immigration records and it will prevent you from applying for future visas later on because of this black mark. So if you want to study longer, uh, the best thing to do is to, uh, instead of applying for the visitor visa, is to apply instead for the student visa. Now, the student visa is one which you have to apply for and get before you travel to the UK. There's a lot of requirements for this. And as I said, if you intend to use a student visa process from next year, then it's probably a good idea that you invest in a lawyer because they're an expensive uh, application process to apply for. It's complex. And if you're refused, it may cause you problems for applying again and uh, for a different type of visa or apply again for a new student visa. You need to be offered a place on a course first under a student visa, and it needs to be a uh, with an institution that's licensed by the Home Office to accept international students. So you can't be offered a course on, in, at any college or any university. It has to be ones which are sponsored by the Home Office. And they need to offer you a course and they need to give you a certificate that says you've been offered uh, a place in this course. That certificate is called a confirmation of acceptance of study. What the university will do when you apply for your course, the university will check a few things to give you this confirmation of acceptance of study. The university will want to make sure that you can pay for uh, your course. Um, so they will want to know whether you can at least pay for the first year of your course of study. And um, so you'll either have to pay for it or you have to have that money in your bank account for a certain period of time to prove you can pay for your course. You also need to uh, show you've got enough money to support yourself and to pay for you and your family uh, as a, on a student visa. And now the, the amounts you need to show to, to support yourself depends on where your course is and how long your course is for, and also whether your course is in London or outside of London. So if your course is inside London, um, you're going to need to show that you've got enough money to support yourself, but, and that money is at a higher level, um, set there at 1,265 UK pounds. Uh, if your course is for outside of London, you're gonna to have to show you've got a lower amount um, uh, for uh, 1,015 pounds, UK pounds per month for up to nine months. So basically those two figures are telling you how much you're going to need to have in a bank account for, for per month for up to nine months before you'll be accepted on the course of study. So you can see you're going to need to have, you know, a minimum of at least £9,000 in a bank account for a certain period of time before you can even apply for this visa. You also need to demonstrate that you can speak, read and write and understand English to a certain level if you're applying for a degree level course. 
Um, and if you're under 18, you're going to need to have evidence that you're got, you have consent from your parents that you can apply for the student visa. So you can already see um, that the requirements are much more complex than the EU settlement scheme. So if you want to live in the UK and you want to live in the UK much easier, then you'll need to move to the UK before the end of this year. Now, that's the end of the, the main chunk of the presentation. And um, there's a lot of information available um, if you want it um, and, and, or if you need it. Um, but before I get onto that extra information, it's worth knowing a bit more about the EU settlement scheme so you can understand just how easy the scheme is. Um, the, the people who have been, there's been 4 million people applying to this EU settlement scheme and 3.8 million have been granted a resident status under the EU settlement scheme. Um, and there's only been a small number of refusals and there's only been a small number of people who have had other outcomes. For example, their application was invalid because they didn't show their passport. So you can see the huge majority of people get a status under this scheme and a very low number of people have been refused. Um, so it's a much easier process than student visas or visitor visas. If you're applying to the EU settlement scheme, there's a number of helplines and a number of organizations that can support you. The Home Office have their own services that can help you through it. One of them is a call centre called the EU Settlement Resolution Centre. Uh, they also have a postcode finder on their website where you can try and look for uh, local charities that help you with this process and who are funded by the Home Office to help you with this process. Um, I wrote, you, don't, you don't have to quickly write down these telephone numbers. I'll make these slides available um, for distribution afterwards so you can have everything uh, with you um, when you need it. Um, the European Commission has a whole lot of information about this and they have it translated into all European languages. So if you want something that's in not, not in English, then the European Commission website is a good place to go to because there are things in, in, um, in other languages. The Home Office itself has a lot of guidance. So if you want to look at the UK Government Home Office website, they have documents called policy guidance documents that tell you how these schemes work. Here there I've got links to the EU settlement scheme. I've also got links to student visas and links to visitor visas. So again, I'll, I'll, allow, I'll send these slides um, over so hopefully everyone present can get them and then you can just click those links if you want to read more. Um, but that's the end of my presentation. I hope that was clear enough um, and I'm happy to answer questions uh, uh, that have come in or, or you want to ask now. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much. Uh, meantime, uh, uh, we receive uh, some uh, some question in the chat box. Uh, maybe I will read it, uh, and uh, you can you will be able to answer some question. Uh, the first one is uh, so. The very next day, I move to UK. I can apply for the pre settled status then. Yeah, that's right. You can apply for pre-settled status as soon as you come to the UK. Um, you will need some kind of evidence to show you're in the UK. Uh, so as I said, you could actually ask for a stamp to be put in your passport. Or when you come to the UK um, and you've set your, your place of residence up and you have some paperwork to show you're here, uh, or you can get a letter from your, your course to, to say you've started your course, then you can apply for pre-settled status. And um, so you can apply as soon as you've got evidence to show that you're in the UK and you're living in the UK. Okay, another one. I don't know if uh, um, about this question uh, you would like to answer you or maybe Christina, but I'm reading it uh, and then uh, you will decide. Good afternoon. I have received an offer to start working in, in the UK starting from the end of December. What happens if I move in UK, let's say in mid-December, living in a hotel while looking for an house and uh, I do, do not sign a, a tenancy agreement before 31 uh, December? Do you have to sign a tenancy agreement before the residence deadline? Uh, shall I jump in? Um, so you don't need a tenancy agreement um, or a, or permanent residence um, place of residence to apply under this scheme. You just need to show that you've started your living uh, time in the UK. 
So if you're living in a hostel, a letter from the hostel to say that you started living in the hostel at this date would should be sufficient. You don't need to wait until you get your tenancy agreement to apply under this scheme. But remember, the deadline is the 30th of June 2021. So you could wait until you get your tenancy. Um, you, your tenancy doesn't need to start before the end of this year, but you do need to have paperwork to show you're here before the end of this year. So the hostel paperwork would work or anything to show you've, you, you are inside the UK and you're living here. Don't wait until you get tenancy agreements. That's not necessary. Okay, I just want to say something in Italian just to make sure that everybody has got this absolutely clear. What Chris is basically saying is, arrivate prima del 31 dicembre, fate domanda prima che potete, se avete bisogno di aiuto, setto vi darà consigli. Le informazioni sono tutte nel sito del governo. L'importante è risiedere prima del 31 dicembre 2020. Grazie, thank you Cristina. Uh, the next question is that uh, I would like to do an Erasmus on UK next year. Is that possible? Maybe I will be able to answer. Uh, the, the answer is uh, for now we don't know because uh, the European Union and UK, as I said before, uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't arrive uh, yet to an agreement. Uh, we hopefully uh, will continue in uh, Erasmus program. Uh, we are waiting, uh, the University of Pavia is waiting to, to understand if uh, we'll continue Erasmus, uh, Erasmus co cooperation with the UK universities. But uh, anyway, I want to say to all of our students that uh, if uh, uh, we, are, we will not allowed to cooperate within Erasmus program, we will find a way to, to sign uh, by, uh, overseas bilateral agreements uh, with uh, our UK partner universities uh, and uh, you will be able uh, in a way to, to continue to have uh, exchange with the uh, UK. Don't worry about that. I don't know if Christina and Chris uh, want to say something other. The next question is, uh, should the whole process be through the app or uh, do we need to do anything face to face? really related to COVID situation, I guess. Should I go? Um, it, you can do this digitally um, if you download the app and your ID document has a chip embedded in it and the app and your device is compatible with your ID document. So as long as those two work, then you can do it digitally. You don't need to see anyone. If it doesn't work, then all your family members are non-European and maybe are not able to use this app, then you will need to um, show your ID document in person. So that will require you after you've submitted your application online to book an appointment at a UK visa center to take your ID document there for them to see um, and to confirm that it's a genuine document. But try the app first, because if you can do it digitally, then it's best and safest for everyone. So you don't need to, to, um, to uh, put yourself at risk um, if, the virus um, is, is causing problems in your area. Thank you. The next, the next question is also to me, uh, I guess. <laughs> what about Erasmus Trainship 2021? Applied to do it, uh, I will be able to do my experience in UK by 21. And uh, the, the answer is yes. If you already been selected for Erasmus Trainship in our past call for application, uh, does, the, the situation will not change for you. So you will be able to, to attend to do the, the period of internship in UK, uh, be allowed to, to receive the scholarship from Erasmus. Uh, but uh, if you enter in the uh, UK um, by the 1st of January, 
you, you you will have to follow the immigration rules that uh, Chris Desira already mentioned. Uh, the next question is, uh, if I already have uh, the pre-settled status, uh, would I be able to join a postgraduate course at the university in the same way uh, I was before? I will also be paying home fees uh, or I don't need a visa and I don't need visa. Yeah, so if you have pre-settled status, you can um, yeah, apply for courses and join courses like you did before, nothing changes. Um, and also you should be eligible for home fees, um, but there are other requirements to meet for home fees. So you need to have pre-settled status. You also need to meet the other home fee requirements. To, and, and one of those requirements is to show that you've been living in the UK or the EU for at least three years. And then if you have, and you have pre-settled status, you pay the, the lower, uh, fees that are home fees so it should be easy to easy for you to do and your pre-settled status is a residence permit you don't need to apply for any other visas once you have pre-settled status you're covered where by that immigration status thank you next question uh, we didn't mention that uh, at the university of pavia we have some uk students enrolled and in fact, uh, the, next, the next question is, uh, I am a UK stu student studying at Pavia. Will be there similar visa requirements uh, to allow me to stay in Italy? Very interesting question. I don't know if you, yeah. if you have an answer. Um, there, there, there will be, there should be. Um, I don't know what they are, um, but um, it works the same way for British citizens in the rest of the EU. So what, what we're talking about, the EU settlement scheme, is the UK's version of the scheme. But every other European country needs to have their own version of a scheme that will protect British citizens living there. The scheme might be different. It might also not be an application process. It might just be a process that declares your residence without you having to go through a process to fill in the form and to prove who you are and that you're living here. So, but what that process is in Italy, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I, I don't know. But you'll, you'll need to check because you'll also need to do a similar thing if you're living in Italy as a student. So check what the scheme is in Italy and make sure you comply with its requirements to make sure that you can continue living in Italy lawfully um, and continue your studies lawfully in Italy. Thank you. Next question. I promise uh, to, to finish at 3 p.m. as we said, Chris. But anyway. Uh, a future has a future UK university student uh, next year. Uh, will I be eligible to uh, British home loans or scholarship with pre-settled status? So with pre-settled status, you're eligible for home fees, um, as we've touched on before. So if you have your pre-settled status uh, and you can meet the other requirements for home fees, then you should be able to be eligible for home fees in the future. Um, I don't know about student loans. Um, I'm sh I, I presume student loans will work in a fairly similar way if you have pre-settled status, uh, but they're always... That when it comes to student loans, they've got their own separate requirements that are not really linked to, to your immigration status. And having pre-settled status does not mean you can get a, get loans. You'll still really need to go through the eligibility for the loans. But for home fees, you need your pre-settled status um, and then you should be covered for your home fees. Okay, thank you. Next, next question is, what do you have to do if you want to apply for a job in UK after 31 of December 2020? Oh, okay, this is a much more complex one to answer. Um, so if you're not living in the UK before the end of this year and you want to get a job sometime next year, then you're going to have to apply for a work visa. Currently, the way work visas work is that you need to be offered a job first before you can travel to the UK. Once you get offered a job, you will then be able to apply for a work visa before you travel to the UK. Now your work visa needs to be from an employer that's sponsored by the Home Office. You can't get any job with any employer. It needs to be an employer that's approved by the Home Office to give jobs to people who are not resident in the UK. 
um, and the jobs require uh, are, are limited to jobs which have certain salary caps as well. So you, from next year, you're going to have to be earning um, in excess of 26,000 UK pounds per annum in a job for to be eligible to apply for a work visa. So lower paid jobs or jobs that uh, are entry level jobs are, are going to be very difficult uh, to get visas for because they won't meet that salary, the, the income threshold that you require for the employment. You also need to play, pay UK visa fees for it. Uh, you need to fill in a more complex application form. And um, so the, the process is much more difficult if you want to come here for work from next year. If you're here before the end of this year and you're on pre-settled status, you can get any job with any employer. You can switch your employers where, wherever you like. But if you come next year and you apply for that work visa, that work visa is linked to your employer. You, you can only stay with that employer. And if you want to change jobs, you're going to have to apply for a new visa. So it becomes a much more rigid process for, to come here for work from next year if you're not here before the end of this year. And because these work visas are even more complex than student visas, I would recommend you getting the lawyer to help you for your work visa um, because it's very easy to be refused one. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe we will collect uh, the last two questions. Uh, one is already into the chat box and I am reading it. As Brexit will limit your scholarship loans, do you know about any fees EU students will be able or get? Perhaps, as you have said, with a pre-settled status, your students might be able to get home fees or so. Yeah, so um, I think with pre-settled status, you can get home fee levels. Um, you'll have access to the student loan schemes, but they'll have their own individual requirements that's not linked to pre-settled status. Um, so you'll still have access to finance, but you're going to have to meet the requirements to access that finance. But again, when it comes to home fees, pre-settled status and proving you've lived in the EU and the UK for at least three years before you apply for your home fee will be enough for you to get home fees. And then you'll continue to be eligible for home fees in the future, even if you're applying for multiple courses. Okay, uh, I think we have the last question of today, but anyway, uh, if the students have more questions, uh, remember that uh, you, you can uh, contact SATLED and also the International Office of the University of Pavia. So if, if you have uh, other questions that are not answered today, don't worry that um, we are here to, to support you. Uh, the last question is uh, actually to me, which are the EU grants available to study in the UK after Brexit? And I have to say that uh, this is a very, very good question, but I don't have any answer for now because, I, I, as I said before, we don't know if UK will leave uh, European Union with an agreement, uh, with a deal. Uh, or uh, and we don't know the contents of this possible uh, deal, but uh, uh, all the universities in Europe and also the universities in UK already asked the European Commission uh, to, to allow UK to stay into the Erasmus Plus program. But anyway, as I said before, even if the uh, UK will leave uh, Erasmus Plus program, don't worry, uh, we are working to, um, to sign bilateral agreements uh, with universities in UK. And uh, uh, the University of Pavia is engaged uh, uh, to, to provide a scholarship uh, to our students uh, to study and uh, get an internship period in UK. Christina, I don't know if you want to say something to, to close the, our meeting. Uh, I, I just have really, really thank you because uh, uh, it's, it was very useful for us. Uh, and uh, the video, uh, just uh, remember that the video is recorded and it will be put in our University of Pavia YouTube channel. 
So if you if uh, you have not the chance to to see the streaming, don't worry. Uh, the registration will be available. Um. I would like to say something very, very briefly. Um, I want to say, first of all, the EU settlement scheme is not dependent on a deal or a no deal. It's signed and is protected by the withdrawal agreement. Uh, Boris Johnson has signed it in January 2020 and has been agreed. So what Chris has just told you is there to stay. If you look at the information that is in the Home Office and has been translated in Italian as well, and I can put the link now, or Maria or Daniela, you can do it for me, please. The information was published in March 2019, the one that is written in Italian. So it's not up to date and it's creating a lot of confusion. So please refer to the English version which is uh, up to date and uh, because in the one in the Italian version they still talk about if we get a deal and uh, options of these things it is creating lots of confusion uh, the other things that i would like to say is that um, we speak in italian i mean i'm speaking to you in english today because uh, uh, this is what re was requested but we talk in italian to you we are very friendly and very happy to answer to any questions uh, just uh, uh, join us uh, through our one one of our platforms so if you have any doubts uh, but um, as we say, the EU settlement scheme is one of those offers that will not happen again. It is a very friendly um, registration scheme. It is uh, very easy to, to access it if you leave, uh, if you reside in the UK before the 1st of December. But uh, anything that will come after will not be as friendly. So, um, if, you've, if you're planning to come in the UK for any reason, in maybe in January or February, just consider it that if you started maybe eight weeks before, if you plan everything, re restructure your plan, then um, you will get a much better deal. That's it. Thank you, Christina. Uh, just uh, the very last question, because uh, this topic uh, has not been been touched uh, for now. Uh, I guess uh, it's a question uh, uh, from uh, one of our professors, actually. Uh, I am a member of the International Scientific Collaboration. The experiment is held in uh, uh, Appleton Laboratory. Uh, did South, cut. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm reading it. I used to South live next door. I used to live in Arwell. I Antonio. need to. Yeah, I need to follow ship weeks uh, at R AL during next year. What kind of idea, uh, idea or visa do I need? What about the health insurance? It's very long. This question. I have one signed with the uh, uh, IENFN. Uh, uh, Guess it's going to be the indirect kind. Hope that, that you understand. Christina. Uh, I can't, it's outside my expertise. This one is uh, maybe Chris, but uh, okay, uh, okay. we are more than happy to answer to Antonio by email. Yeah, um, so um, it, it, it it's a bit hard to tell you at the moment because mm -hmm. some of this is linked to the, the, the deal that's being negotiated by the UK and the EU. Um, so part of the future arrangements, which covers trade, um, uh, for example, also covers mobility when it comes to um, uh, st studying and also people working in, in the educational industry. And if the deal is agreed, then there'll be a mobility framework built into it that will allow movements between the EU and the UK and the UK and the EU for anyone working within um, higher education institutes, studying, research, and also for for student visas. Um, so it really depends on what the outcome of that deal is. Um, if assuming there is no deal, then you'll have to look to see whether the visit visa process will cover you for the length of time that you want to be here and the activities that you're going to be undertaking while you're here. That might be the best route for you, uh, but you need to make sure that what your plan, planned activities uh, 
uh, for you when you arrive here will fit within the permitted activities for visit visa. So wait to see what the outcome of the deal will be if there is one between the UK and the EU. And if there isn't, then look at the visit visa process because that might be the one that you'll have to use. Assuming that the uh, UK immigration system doesn't change again, because there are likely to be a lot more changes, but it all depends on what the outcome of the deal will be if there is one. And if there's no deal, the immigration system will still have to adapt because it all needs to include all of those things that would have been included in an EU and UK deal. So you have to wait and see for the moment, I'm afraid. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, I know that Professor Alvaro wants to close uh, our meeting, so, Matteo. Thank you, Michela. Well, I wanted to take a chance to acknowledge again, Chris, uh, Christina, and all the people that have made this happen, and also the people behind the scene, because there's a lot of people you see that are answering your questions. Thanks to all of you. Um, and I wanted to make a couple of comments, one of which is actually directed to the question that uh, Antonio De Bari had before. I would suggest to you to contact as soon as you can the beam line or the facility you need to access to, because we've had this problem in the past with people coming from outside Europe. Uh, and they are usually very helpful in helping you out with all the documents you need to prepare because uh, probably it, you will take a different path from what we've been describing now uh, because your length of stay will be shorter for multiple time intervals. Um, and then I also wanted to comment uh, because I've seen some of the questions that were more you know, related to the COVID situation we're living now rather than the actual only the actual issues with, with uh, um, mobility uh, related to the visas. Um, and I would like to invite uh, all of the students to think about the fact that in reality, for most of the universities, uh, it's not that we no longer have costs because of the COVID. It's not because you're not participating to all of the courses, all of, all of the classes that uh, we're not paying heating system, for example or that we are not paying the electricity bills. So universities still are facing higher costs and in several countries, they are also facing a loss of students. So it's always a trade-off and uh, is, a, is a critical situation for everyone. Uh, but I would say it has been already quite amazing that university didn't have to increase the costs for buying all the computers, cameras, and equipment for each individual lecturer and professor that allows us to keep up with the uh, teaching at distance. So after all of this, I again acknowledge all of our speakers. Thank you very much. And thanks to all the participants. Thank you, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, thanks to Daniela, Maria, Maurizio. You've been fantastic on the chat. If there are any outstanding questions, please move them through an email platform. Um, you can write at advice at settle.org.uk. Scrivete a advice, scritto ad vice, chiocciola settle.org.uk. Grazie. Grazie a tutti.